Welcome to Freedom Tech Weekend. This is uh, this is Marks. I'm your host every week, week in and week out. Let's make sure that we're live here on the channels. But as you can see, I'm not in my normal location. I am on a trip. I'm just checking to see if this is live. There we go. We are live. Great. Got audio. Um, yeah, I'm I'm in a remote location. If I bend over here, you can see the ocean is behind me. There's the water, beautiful water. Go out, get some sun, touch some grass, get in the sand, go swimming, do something. Wherever you are, you can get outside and enjoy a little bit of mother nature. And maybe not today, but tomorrow. If you're in poor weather somewhere, the weather will pass. Uh, go get some sun. Okay, we're live everywhere, it looks like. Let's see if we're even live on Zapstream. Yeah, all right, Zapstream is working this time. That's awesome. I'm gonna mute it, sorry about that. Okay. Cool. Well, today's show is going to be a little short for multiple reasons. One, I am on a trip, so it's not going to be as long. And then also, um, my battery is getting low on my laptop. So we got that going for us too. And I took so long getting this all set up out here that I didn't don't have time to go grab the cable here. But let's see. Sure. Okay, great. Today, we're going to be talking about taking notes. Uh, note taking is something that Tons of people do. I'm sure you take notes. And there are like a, a million tools out there for taking notes. And so many of them have different privacy uh, implications underneath the hood. And so I want to talk about the one that I use every day, which is Obsidian. And I have tried tons of different tools. This is the one that I'm using right now. I am always looking for something better. I have another one on my radar that I want to start trying. And so I'm going to give it a try here in a little while and then do a future show about it and maybe compare my experience between Obsidian and this other one that I want to look at. It's called AnyType. So let's dive into Obsidian. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat. Uh, got some emoji thumbs up and smiley faces. All right. Thanks, Johnny. Uh, cool. We got some people on the stream. So again, if you're just joining us, uh, we got the ocean behind us. I've got birds all around chirping. And I've got ocean sounds. It's great. We are going to talk about note taking. Let's secure our notes. So um, I know probably the most popular note taking app is uh, is Google Drive and Google Docs. People take notes in there all the time. It's super easy and it synchronizes everywhere that you are. So you just pop open a tab and you start typing and then you can share it with other people. And that's awesome. Most people in my experience from, from when I've, I've talked to people and seen what they're doing, the sharing functionality is great, but for a ton of people, they just use it just to take their personal notes and they take them in there and that's it. Um, so I wanna show you something that could hopefully replace that for you so you're not sharing all of your notes with Google. And you can get a lot similar experience as Google. You do miss out on some of the collaboration. You still get collaboration, but you get you miss out on some of it. So I would say if you need that, then you separate your note taking and you make Obsidian your default or whatever local privacy one you wanna do, you make that your default. And then you use something like Google only when you need to collaborate with others and you're okay with that information being stored on Google servers, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> nice comment, uh, win some hacks talking about touch grass and accidentally not saying grass and saying something else. It, that could make for a good day or it can make for a really bad day for you, depending on how that goes down. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna look at Obsidian here. Again, uh, if you're just joining, this is gonna be a shorter show because I'm, I'm on a trip and I have low battery. Okay, so you are seeing my Obsidian here. Let me just make sure you are seeing this. Yes, you are. All right, cool. This is uh, this is Obsidian. It has a lot of the note-taking stuff that you'd expect inside any app. You can create a document. You can create folders, right? I've got I've got tabs here, so I can have multiple documents open at once. So I have. Uh, come on, let's do this. Okay, so this is I'm showing you the ins and outs of kind of how I prepare my shows here. So I've got this master app list for Freedom Tech Weekend, where I keep track of apps that I want to talk about, and then I cross them out after I've talked about them. So you can see some upcoming episodes. I'd love to do bit chat. I'd love to one of our one of our viewers the other day brought up the Aura digital frame. 
that they got for their birthday and they're wanting to get something more privacy focused. So I want to try and find um, digital frames that have a little bit of privacy built into them. I want to talk about eBooks and audiobooks on a future episode. Um, there's this photo app called Ante Photos that I want to look at. I still want to do one on Meshtastic. Sparrow is, a, is a th something I'd love to cover. And then Anytype is the one that I mentioned here at the very beginning that might become my future note taking. It's, it's so much more than note taking, but I want to look into that one more. Uh, one episode I was looking at doing was vibe coding your own tools. And so that's what I have over here. I've come up with some use cases for maybe things that we could go over covering how to vibe code your own tools. If you're not a programmer, but you have little things that you want to do, um, then you can vibe code some little utility for yourself. Now, Obsidian, the main thing here is that all of your notes are stored locally. You have a vault, right? So I've got this vault down here for Freedom Tech Weekend. If I click on this, um, this is also, we use it for uh, for work. And so we have a shared vault for work, which goes into the collaboration stuff, right? Now, as I'm typing here, right, if I, there's Noster, if I type and just say blah, 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 then this is immediately stored on my laptop. But then it is also synchronized to the Obsidian Cloud, but it's using an encryption key. So the encryption key is something that I know that Obsidian doesn't know. And so it's privately encrypted here and then sent to their servers and then sent to all my other devices. So I, they have mobile apps for Android and iOS. They have desktop apps, obviously, like I'm using. And then they have Linux apps. So it's available on every single platform that I want to be on. Uh, and then uh, it is synchronized in the background automatically. The collaboration stuff is pretty simple. Um, it's if somebody else was sharing this with me, as they start typing, stuff starts moving around on my screen, very similar to Google Docs. Um, they also have a robust, obviously you can see here on the left, you've got your file picker where you can have folders for files and things. Um, this is when I was trying to figure out if I could do some kind of post about like, what are the macronutrients of a beef patty, a Beyond Meat patty and a Snickers bar, which is kind of a funny little thing I was working on. Uh, let's see, you, you have all these other things over here that I don't really use that much, but they've got like a canvas thing so you can drag and drop and do some kind of more free form layout. Let's see, start a note for today, maybe more journaling, my graph view. Let's not look at that. All right. How do I get back to what I was doing? Okay. The other thing I want to show you is they have this whole community thing of, of plugins. Now I. I'm only sharing Obsidian, so I'm not going to go, but we always go and look at GitHub here on Freedom Tech Weekend or wherever the source code is hosted. One caveat about Obsidian is that the core code for Obsidian is not open source, but a ton of their other stuff is. So they have like a whole ecosystem of open source stuff around Obsidian, but the core itself is not. Um, so you are trusting that the encryption that is done on your laptop locally is done correctly and that it is encrypted through to their servers when it's synchronized. So there is a trust level there. That's one reason why I want to look at any type because any type is fully open source. Um, <clears throat> so that I want to be open and transparent there with that. Maybe something has changed, but when I went looking this morning, I couldn't find the open source code for the core. Okay, I want to open up preferences settings and show you a little bit in here. So obviously you can do auto updates for your app if you want to. Now I have purchased an account where I get like elevated syncing access to their servers and I can add people. I can't remember. Um, there's a commercial license here. Oh, I hope I didn't just dock something there. My bad. Um, so what I wanted to show you here is community plugins. Now with community plugins, you can click on browse and they have tons of stuff in here. So for one, I've, I've played around with this Kanban board here. So if you're doing project management or managing your own stuff, like you can click on Kanban and then it creates a nice little like column area where you can drag and drop similar to Trello. They have calendars, so you can build a whole calendar here with an Obsidian. It's really powerful. Tables, um, Excaladra, edit and draw Excaladra. Files, data view task manager. So you can have a whole task manager inside here. Now the underlying thing with Obsidian is that it uses Markdown files. And this is actually really awesome. So you can use Markdown in here and then you can copy and paste it in GitHub or any other tool that uses Markdown. Ghost blog uh, accepts it really well. So it's nice to go from here to, to Ghost. I do a lot of that. 
And then something else that's good is um, the files are just markdown files on your laptop. So I said they're stored locally. You can just grab them and open them. It's not some it's not some proprietary format that is only known to Obsidian, and that's great. All right, we've got some comments here. Um, features I need and will not use without have to have encryption. Number two, Obsidian not knowing the keys in case of hacks. Three, availability on Linux and mobile. Sounds like it covers. I, to my knowledge, it covers all of those. Um, again, the core is not open source. Another Promethean is saying log sec is just as good and it's open source. I did see that in my in my research. So I'll look at log sec. And then you also like any type. That's awesome because I any type has like a ton of amazing promises on their page of what they can accomplish. And so I'm definitely going to try that out and give you guys give you guys a view. Um, but if you want to look at log sec, then you can go check that out. And then um, any type is one I'm going to be looking at next after after this. Okay, like I promised, this is a short show today. Note taking. Some people might needed to hear might have needed to hear this just to know like there are other options than Google Notes out there or Microsoft OneNote or Evernote. These are systems that helped get collaboration within Notes and kind of opened up the space. But there is so much more now that you can do that is more secure, more private, more open source. And that's what we're all about here. We're trying to bring more freedom and sovereignty to any tool that you use. So this weekend, go grab a tool, whether it's Obsidian or Grow Grab LogSec, which we haven't looked through here, but is recommended. Or you can grab uh, any type and go check them out. You don't need my permission. Just go look into these tools yourselves. We're trying to empower you with the skills that you need to, to go suss out what is a good project and maybe what is not. So go take a look at one of these note-taking apps. Start taking some notes there. And, um, and then I hope you have a great weekend. So let's go ahead and end the share here. Get back to my stream studio. We got 600 people on there. I think we have some. Oh, let me check the, uh, the Zap stream. We got some over on Zap stream as well, but no comments. So thank you for joining me. Go out, have a great weekend, touch grass, feel the sun, do all that great stuff. Find some family and friends. If you can find some to be around in person, if that's possible, it'll bring a lot of joy and happiness in your life. All right. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Later.